right where you're at, in your living room, in your car, with your bedroom slippers on, Ooh, or maybe you don't even wear slippers, whatever. I don't, I don't Do either, no. Oh, Pastor Victoria, today, today. is exciting. Oh, why? We're talking about one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Oh, yes, we're talking about Joseph and Ooh. how God's game plan for Joseph's life. Ooh. Yes, and the, and the theme is all about turn it around. Yes, we're turn... Pastor Victoria? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, what are you doing? I'm turning it around. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about what we're talking about today is turn it around, not you turn, turn, turn it around. around. Anyway, I don't know what's wrong with her today, but uh, <laughs> Pastor Victoria, we are talking all about how God has the incredible ability to turn situations around in our life Ooh. that were meant for evil or bad and turn them around for our good. Oh. And we are going to see that all in the life of Joseph today. That makes sense. It makes sense, right? Like we don't have to do this kind <laughs> of stuff. Okay. We're not talking about all okay. that kind of weird stuff. Okay. We're talking about turning it around and how God can do that in our life. Okay. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. So what we want you to do is keep your attention on the screen as we find out a little bit more about what's happening today. <sighs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, hey. You're just in time. I'm waiting on a phone call from my coach. We had makeup tryouts yesterday and I feel like I did pretty good. After all, I After had all, you have an excellent trainer, if I do say so myself. Yeah, Tony, I was just about to say that. I have an excellent trainer. And you're following God's game plan for your life. I sure am. I've learned so much on this journey. You sure have, shortstop. It's like my old pal, Potty Skippin' used to say. Wait. Potty skipping? That's what I said. Did I stutter? Don't you mean Scotty Pippen of the world champion Chicago Bulls? No, I'm talking about Potty Skippin'. He's the guy that will clean the basketballs for my team that I played on in middle school. Anyway, it's like Potty used to say, you can't trust a porcupine to weave his own basket. And what exactly was that supposed to mean? I have no idea, but I always thought it sounded funny. <laughs> Forget about it. Gladly. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Oh, it's the coach. What am I supposed to do? Oh, uh, you answer the phone. Hello? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey, coach. Yeah? You're kidding. Yeah, I understand. Okay, bye. Well, don't just stand there. What did he say? Well, he said that there was a major mix-up with the video. You see, the coach recorded a video to show it all the assistant coaches to show them our skills and evaluate us to see if we were ready to make the team. Yeah, so? So, the coach said the video of me got corrupted, so he wasn't able to show any of the assistant coaches how I did. Well, what does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. It means they have nothing to evaluate my skills. There's no way I'm going to make the team now. Now just hold on. God can still turn this thing around. Turn this around? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. After all, God did make us a promise in Romans 8.28. What promise is that? And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. How in the world can this work together for my good? This is terrible. The video is totally corrupted. It's over for me, Tony. Yeah, well, I bet people thought it was over for Joseph, too. Who's Joseph? Is it another one of your basketball buddies? No, Joseph in the Bible. The kids are gonna learn all about in the lesson today how Joseph went through some horrible things in his life. It looked like things were gonna be over, but God turned it all around for his good. Really? Well, I sure would like to hear about that. You will, and so will the kids. Never count God out. He can turn things around. You just got to trust in his promises. Okay, I will. That's what I like to hear. Now, another funny thing that Potty Skipper used to say is sometimes he would take his toothbrush and put it in his ears because it makes his toenails vibrate. Hmm. Hey, boys and girls, Pastor Victoria here. And you know what that intro video reminded me of? 
It reminded me of this week's power verse, which, fun fact, is my life verse. I love this verse so much, and I can't wait to share it with you. So what I want you to do is grab your trusty fire Bibles or any Bible in the house and turn to the book of Romans with me. If you don't know where that's at, that's in the New Testament. And we're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And it says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. Boys and girls, this is something that's really, really important to remember. No matter what you may go through, no matter what you may face, it may be a bad situation or a good situation, but I promise you that God is able to turn it all around for your good. So I'm not gonna turn around again, but I want you to go ahead and repeat after me. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. Boys and girls, you did so, so good. I heard you all the way from here. Now I want you just to always remember that God's able to turn everything around. Turn your eyes more to the screen for more of this week's lesson. God's story, Joseph. So part of God's story is about a guy named Joseph, and it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Joseph who had 10 older brothers and one younger one. When Joe was a boy, he was his dad's favorite. In fact, his dad liked him so much better than his brothers that he gave Joe a special gift to prove it. You can imagine this made his brothers jealous. And Joe only made things worse. He told his brothers about dreams he had where he was ruling over them. Well, this made Joe's brothers furious. One day they were working and saw Joe coming. They said, here comes that dreamer. They threw Joe into a dark pit. They might have left him there forever, but they met some men traveling from Egypt and sold Joe to them as a servant instead. They thought that was slightly nicer than leaving him in a pit. Then they went home and told their father Joe had been killed by a wild animal. This broke their dad's heart. Kids, these brothers were really bad news. Selling a sibling is never a good idea. Ever. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joe. When Joe was a servant, he worked for a really important rich guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of the whole house. Joe was happy until one day he was blamed for something he didn't do, and Potiphar sent him straight to jail. Well, God was still with Joe, even in prison. The guard decided he liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Then God gave Joe special knowledge about dreams. When two prisoners had dreams, Joe knew what they meant. So he told them. Two years later, Egypt's ruler called Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody knew what it meant. But by now, one of the two prisoners Joe had helped was out of jail and working for Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh about Joe, and God helped Joe figure out what Pharaoh's dream meant. But Pharaoh's dream was really more of a nightmare. It meant that everybody in Egypt would have food for seven years, then be hungry for seven years. Joe told Pharaoh the only way to survive was to store food during the seven good years. Well, Pharaoh thought Joe's idea was brilliant. He put him in charge. During the seven hungry years, nobody could eat without getting food from Joe. He was like a human vending machine. Well, remember how Joe had 11 brothers? Like everybody else, they had to get food from Joe. And when they came, they didn't even recognize their brother. But Joe knew who they were. He secretly tested them to see if they changed. After all, they did throw him in a pit and sell him. Finally, he couldn't hide who he was from his brothers anymore. He told everyone to leave the room because he was about to cry. After sobbing for a few minutes, he told them, I'm your brother Joseph. I'm the one you sold. The brothers couldn't believe it. They had hurt Joe, but God had taken care of him during the good times and the bad. Even with everything they had done to Joe, he forgave them because he was willing to follow God even when it was hard. Joe told them, you plan to harm me, but God planned it for good. 
And God used Joe to save many lives, including the family that was part of God's special rescue plan. And that's the story of Joseph. Don't you think? 
Now, I know that you were listening to our Bible story today and you heard all about the things that happened in Joseph's life. Just to name a few bad things, how about, first of all, his own brothers sell him into slavery after they tried to kill him first, okay? That's a bad thing. What else? How about he got accused of doing something wrong that he didn't do, and he was put in prison. He was forgotten by the cupbearer and the baker when he was in prison. There were so many things that we can't even begin to talk about all the bad things that happened in Joseph's life. But if you remember from our Bible story, Joseph said to his brother something incredibly powerful. And he said this, he said, you know, what you did to me, you intended it to harm me. But God has used it. Matter of fact, God turned it around and used it for good. So that so many people's lives, including yours, can be saved. And so Joseph understood our very first point. And you know what that is, boys and girls? Our first point, the first thing that I want you to understand today is number one, bad things happen. Bad things will happen. People will hurt us. People will let us down. Things will happen in our life that we don't like. We'll get sick. Things will hurt our feelings. People will let us down all the time. But we have to remember that in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says these words. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heed because I've overcome this world. He didn't say, um, maybe you will have trouble or I think that you might have trouble one day in life. No, Jesus said in this world, you will face trouble. Trouble and bad things happen. And guess what? They happened in Joseph's life. But one thing Joseph understood is not only that bad things happen, but the reason why he was cool with everything that was happening was that Joseph understood that even though bad things happen, God is in control. God is in control. Boys and girls, that is our second point. I want you to understand that even though bad things happen in life, God is still in control. You see, Joseph did not freak out when he was sold into slavery. You know why? Because he knew that God was in control. Joseph didn't freak out when he was in prison, falsely accused for something that he did not do. Do you know why? Because he knew that God was in control. Boys and girls, Joseph understood that God was behind the scenes working his game plan out for Joseph's life. Even if in the natural, he couldn't see God working behind the scenes, he knew that God was in control, working together to turn everything around for his good. Joseph didn't freak out. He knew that God was in control. You see, boys and girls, if Joseph had never been sold into slavery and thrown into prison, then he would have never been able to interpret the dream for Pharaoh and become the ruler of the land. You and I must never forget that God is in control. And because God is in control, boys and girls, God can take the bad that happens in our life and use it for good. God has a way of taking things in our life that people or things were, that were meant for evil and turn it around and make them work for our good in our life. Guess what? That was our power verse. He has the ability to take 
what was evil, something that was not good, and turn. My God. You see, boys and girls, we have to remember that God can take the bad and use it for good. God has a way of taking the things that were meant for evil and making them work out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Wow, it sounds very much like our power verse, right? But that's what we need to understand. When someone close to you gets sick, believe that God can turn it around for the good. When somebody around you, maybe it's your mom or your dad, loses their job, you got to believe that God can turn it around. Maybe he has a better job ahead of them. We have to know that God can take the bad and use it for his good. Aren't you thankful for that? You may be asking to yourself or wondering and thinking, you know, Pastor Sid, would God really let something bad happen to somebody just so that he can show his plan and he can turn it around? Would God really do that? Well, guess what? The answer is yes. And you say, well, why? And I say yes because he did it with his one and only son, Jesus. Jesus went through things that you and I look at as bad. He died on the cross. He suffered for you and I. He was beaten. He was, he was made fun of. He was insulted. And he went through all of that bad stuff so that God could turn it around and use it to save the lives of everyone who believes in him. Some of you may be wondering today, Pastor Sid, would God really allow something bad to happen in someone's life just so that he can bring about good and turn the situation around? And the answer is yes. And you may wonder how I know that. And it's because he did it with his son, Jesus. You see, God allowed Jesus to be beaten and nailed to a cross so that his plan of salvation could be brought about for you and for me. You see, boys and girls, God can take what seems to be bad and use it to bring about something amazing and good. We have to remember that bad things happen but that God is still in control and that we can trust him no matter what. We can trust him no matter what because he's a great big God and he has a game plan for your life and mine and he can turn every situation around and use it for good. Amen. Awesome. Well, I want to take a moment today and I want us to pray together because some of you I know some of your lives and your families are, are walking through some really difficult and hard moments and some of you may have been listening to me this morning thinking oh pastor Sid I don't know if I believe all the things you're saying if if God is so good why do bad things happen I want to just let you know remember that he's in control and he can turn it around for your good. And so at this moment, I would love it if maybe if you're together with your mom or your dad or your siblings or your grandparents, I'd love for you to gather together. And if you're by yourself, that's awesome too. But I want us to take a moment and I want us to just as a family or just individually, just to take a moment and pray. So would you do that right now? Awesome. It's so awesome to be reminded that no matter what we face in life, just like Jesus said in John 16, that in this world, we will have troubles. 
but that we can take courage, that we can be full of courage because he has already overcome this world. We can be reminded today that he is turning it around for our good. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Jesus, I thank you for your presence. I thank you that in your presence, things change. And right now, I pray for every mom and dad and boy and girl, anyone that's listening right now, anybody that's watching, Lord, I pray that they would be reminded that even in those moments when bad things are happening, bad things are all around, that you're still in control. Help us to never forget that you are still in control and that you are working things out for our good, that you can turn things around, that even though they may look bad right now, God, you are working behind the scenes, just like our power verse said, that you are working it out for our good, for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. We thank you today. Help us to be encouraged by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Whoa! That was so good. That was so good, Pastor. So Sandy. good. Just like how God could take our lives and He could turn it around. Uh oh, turn, turn it around. around. Now I understood why you was turn turning around. around. That was so good. So good and so timely. Yeah. Because guess what? Our whole world is in a in a crazy place. So true. Wondering like what's happening with coronavirus. What's happening with all the injustice in our world? I know. But do you know that today we were reminded that regardless of what bad stuff is happening, yeah, you could turn it around for our good, for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So do you love him and are you called? Yes, you are. So and so he's going to work it out. Yeah. Pastor Victoria, why don't you tell us where we're going next week? Oh, next week. I don't think y'all ready for yeah, next week. Yeah, they ready. They, they ready. ready. Next week, we are talking about training for God. Training for God? What do you mean? Like, we're in the Olympics? We're going to run? I think oh. we're going to run, or maybe, what is it, are we? Could that be it? Oh, it's like this. No no, 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 no. We're talking about when we train a child. Training up a child. Yeah. And how that even as being a, a, a Christ follower, that there are things that we have to do to prepare us yeah. for life. That's right. Just similar to like Absolutely. if you go into the army or yeah. if you're in the Olympics and you have to train real hard. I wonder what we're going to be talking about. Well, if you want to find out what we're talking about, we will check you out next week for another edition of Kids Point Live coming right at you. I'm Pastor Sydney. I'm Pastor Victoria. And we'll see you next week. Bye.